Hello, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com and also BlogTalkRadio.com forward slash election channel. And that's where you're going to find, so far, about 30 interviews with independent and third-party candidates who are, number one, on the ballots, and number two, the only third-party or option in or or the third option third party or independent option in their district and so we've been um lucky enough to conduct these interviews and it's been great and today we have an interview with lenny ladner who's a libertarian for the u.s house of representatives in district seven in tennessee and so let's give him a call and conduct this interview we just want to let people know their options we believe a responsible media uh, will interview um, candidates who are on the ballots. If they're on the ballot and they have a statistical chance to win, then we believe a responsible media will include them in the debates, interview them, and educate and inform the public of their options. So we're not telling you who to vote for, but we want you to know all the options, where they stand, and their qualifications, and who your best option is. Uh, you can decide that. So let's give uh, Lenny a call. Hi, good day, Lenny. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. Good to uh, talk with you today, sir. And we're talking with Lenny Ladner for Congress and uh, Tennessee's 7th District for the U.S. House. And again, that's Ladner, L-A-D-N-E-R, the number four, Congress.com. And how are you doing this Wednesday afternoon, sir? Well, I think I, uh, it took me 20 minutes to go a quarter mile in Indianapolis. I've been out of doing fine. How you doing? I'm doing great, and it's um, wonderful to be able to talk to someone who is giving their uh, district another option this November 8th, which, which is just about 40 days away. Let me ask you, have you been in any debates? Um, are there any debates coming up uh, in your district? Nope. Uh, the incumbent won't touch me. She won't go near me. She won't go within 25 miles of me because I expose her record. This is supposed to be a <clears throat> conservative Republican. And the reality is all she does is introduce these bills, which in some way, shape, or form wind up increasing the size, the cost, the reach of power to government. She says they don't do it, but all but any time you introduce a bill, that's what it does. So let me my uh, it's, my, it's just you against a Republican in your district. Um, there's no Democrats it, it, in this. There's a, there's a there's a Democrat, but this. <laughs> yeah, but they don't have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know it's interesting. A certain chamber of commerce, I'm not going to mention names, invited okay. me to speak. And I already had load going home. I was already loading load going home. I already had plans. At the last minute, I get a call of canceling it. Why are you canceling it? Well, the incumbent can't show up. So why can't you have me there? Oh, we want a debate. We don't want you introducing yourself. But let me, t let me tell you, listeners, about these chambers of commerce. Mm -hmm. What they want is more government and what they want is a representative that will bring home some bacon once in a while, like money for a senior center, money for an indoor swimming pool for the juvenile delinquents. And the only way the incumbents get to bring home money is if they vote for a bill that nobody wants because that bill is earmarked. So when you get the... I understand. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I think there's a two-second delay there. Yeah. When, when, when you get that nice letter from your congressman, look at all these things I did. All of that money came from taxpayers or future debt. And the worst thing about the earmark is usually they earmark between 5 and 10% of a foreign aid bill for local projects to get people to vote for it. That's what they do. And that's another reason a certain chamber of commerce, not mentioning names, didn't want me because I exposed that. But let me let me tell you what my platform is. Sure. And any anybody out there can do this. You do not need to be smart. You do not need to be well read. You do not need to be an expert on Mises or Rothbard or any of those great great guys. You don't. You you need you need to run for office. Preferably 
House of Representative or State Representative or County Commission. And you need to judge all of these bills that you're going to vote on by a simple standard. In other words, every bill is judged the same way. And that standard is, does this, if this passes, excuse me, if this bill passes, will it increase the size, the cost, will it extend the government's reach of power? And if so, you vote no. You don't need to be an expert on foreign aid. You don't need to be an expert on the Middle East. You don't need to be an expert on weapons. You don't. You just need to get out there and run and say, hey, I'm going to vote no so the government don't grow. <laughs> and you'd be surprised. That's a good it, it, it's real simple. Vote no so the government doesn't grow. Yeah. 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 But, but, but again, let me, let me repeat myself. I'm running for Congress, and whenever I speak, I'm going to speak tomorrow night in, in Honewall, Tennessee, at the Rio, Colorado. According to my friend Brad Martin, who, who runs the Hickman County newspaper, it's the best Mexican restaurant in the state. Well, it's the best Mexican restaurant in Honewald. I don't really travel that much except in the truck. But, you know, my, my whole thing is I'm going to tell you how I'm going to vote. I'm going to give you a reason to vote for me by how I'm going to vote. And how I'm going to vote is no on anything no matter how they put the bill together, that would increase the size, the cost, to reach the power of government. And that's what people don't want to hear, and both parties are afraid of that, that their yeah, candidates so, get exposed. So anything that would give more freedom, you would um, look at it, but anything that would take away more freedom, you know, you're going to vote no against that. Now, let me ask you, have you challenged well, your um, opponent to any debates? Uh, it just seems unbelievable that um, – are there going to be any debates at all? I mean, it just no. seems unbelievable. And, and I, was advised, I was advised by a very close friend of mine, Charlie Smith, not to challenge her. And the reason is I'm running against all of these clowns, with the exception of Tom Massey and maybe Amish. They all got to go, all of them. And the Republicans, believe it or not, are worse than the Democrats because the Democrats will tell you that they're going to grow the government. The Republicans will – the Democrats will grow the government a lot. The Republicans will grow it a little. Does that make sense? No, that, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you, you don't know what yeah. you're getting, and, and they'll just uh, kind of put it on the debt card uh, instead. And um, mm -hmm. So that counts just as much as raising your taxes. Well, let me ask you about some specific issues. I mean, even though there's an over, um, a holistic approach. Tom, that can, I, can I, yeah, can, can I just say one thing? Okay, freedom is the opposite of slavery. And if you want to know how much of a slave you are, what did you pay in income tax last year? Okay, I'm not, I'm not asking you. Liberty is what they're taking from us. Liberty is a, neg is a negative expression. It's the opposite of tyranny. Tyranny is arbitrary government. So when the ATF gets uh, $5 million for a program, that's going to target gun owners. That's tyranny. All right? There are no bills, and no bills have ever been introduced that actually promote liberty or freedom. The best we could do is to get people in the House of Representatives to stop the growth in government and then cut back these agencies in a reverse fashion. They're expanded. Yeah, now, um, let me ask you, um, well, one other thing. If, so you're not afraid of debates. And uh, just, just to be clear, no. if, you were, if you happen to be elected in November 8th and two years from now, you have someone wanting to challenge you, and let's say you're the incumbent would you um, hide away from debates at that point, or would you be willing to debate no. any challengers potentially? Let's talk. I don't, I don't yeah. have a problem. Okay. All right. In, so in, now. In 2000. Go ahead. Yeah. In, in 2014, when I ran, uh, a, a, bun a bunch of organizations had candidate forums. They're not doing it this year because the presidential election. Okay. And. Most people had heard me said I'm about the only one that knows what's going on. By the way, the incumbent would not show up because she's uh, funded by a lot of special interests and wealthy individuals, and 
She doesn't really have to defend her seat. I mean, I don't have any money. I'm not raising any money. Anyway, let, let, let's go to the questions you wanted to ask. And the traffic is actually moving here. Yeah, so um, uh, as far as the uh, some reforms that you'd want to bring uh, if you were selected or, or elected as a uh, U.S. Congress member, and again, we're talking with uh, Lenny Ladner, which is Ladner, the number four, congress.com. And, uh, and on your website, you do list a bunch of issues here in the issues link. And um, so let me ask you one very important thing about war and peace. I mean, there's, uh, you know, I guess it's the best of times. It's the worst of times. Um, how do you envision America and our relationships with the rest of the world, let's say, in an ideal situation, if we could have the ideal policies, um, let's say, 10 years out, five years out, however it might be, but in an ideal situation, um, what should be, um, what, how should we be interacting, what should be our relationship with other countries? And, and you know, this can get into trade, it can get into war and peace. Um, how do you envision the U.S. and its role in the world? Uh, I like what uh, George Washington said, and it's debatable whether he actually wrote the speech or Alexander Hamilton wrote the farewell address, but George Washington set up our foreign policy, and our foreign policy was, quote, commercial relations with all, entanglements with none, meaning none. The other, the other part of an ideal libertarian or American foreign policy would be to go back to the Monroe Doctrine. I didn't notice until Saturday. I was at a World War II reenactment. There was some evidence that the uh, Nazis were setting up a base in Antarctica, and we sent an expedition down there, and we were prepared to declare war based on the Monroe Doctrine. Uh, we didn't find any evidence of it, by the way. It's something they kept, they've kept out of history. But... Uh, we, we need to mind our business, and we need to go back to the original concept of this country, which was liberty and minding our business. As far as trade, uh, when you have two businessmen trading, it's one thing. When you have governments trying to regulate trades, NAFTA, GATT, Codex Elementis, etc. That's just more government. I'm in favor of getting out of all of these trade agreements because all they do is give the government more power. Pick a trade agreement. God help us if this TPP passes. Yeah. yeah that I like has that nothing one. to do. Yeah. I, don't like it. I don't like any of them. And under NAFTA, and I, I tried to explain this to owner-operator independent driver, which is a waste of time. It's a, a lobbying group. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I own and operate an 18-wheeler, and I'm actually working as I'm talking to you. All right? You can see a picture of it on the website. Uh, basically, we have to, under NAFTA, we have to harmonize our laws with those of our trading partners. You know what that means to the Second Amendment, right? I hope nothing. I mean, what does it mean to it? It means we have to harmonize. Under NAFTA, we, ha we have to agree to the Canadian and Mexican laws. So if you're a congressman and you signed on to NAFTA back in 1994, I see a tribunal happening eventually. The people in this country are waking up, and they do not like what they see. But as far as the trucks, they're going to they're put in these speed limiters to comply with the Canadian speed limiters. i got a better idea. Leave us alone. Let us work. We're very productive. Uh, and anyway, <laughs> no, no, no. That's 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 great. And uh, now, um, what what do you think about like? Um, I mean, is, is the answer? Most people do want a whole new Congress. I mean, um, you know, I remember Bill Buckley a long time ago saying you could probably just pick people out of the phone book and uh, you'd get better representation. But besides that. I mean, if you look at the polls, people say they would throw them all out. Uh, they say we need term limits. They say, um, you know, the trust in Washington is at all-time lows. The trust in the media is at all-time lows. It hasn't – this is not new. It's been that way for about a decade at least, and it's gone up and down. And um, so 
you know, but all I see in Congress is Republicans and Democrats. And so um, is this possibly the year where uh, of the third party of the change candidates, I mean, the real change candidate maybe bring some competition into Congress besides just, uh, you know, Republican versus Democrat? Maybe we need some more competition. Well, I, Tom, I got, I got a question for you. What if I ran for office with the same platform as a Democrat and agreed to do the same thing that, I'm, that, I'm, that I agreed to do now, vote no on any bill which would increase the size of the cost to reach power to government, or as a Republican? You see, what we need is we need to get ordinary people in there to start running. All right? They don't need to know nothing. These politicians don't know nothing. And the majority's politicians are bought and paid for. Marsha Blackburn's bought and paid for. Diane Black's bought and paid for. Steve Cohen's bought and paid for. Jim Cooper. Uh, Roe, Duncan. I'll say it to their face. All right? Uh, I'm not going to say... I, I don't know how to fix the system. Oh, excuse me. I do know how to fix the system. Get rid of something called the Federal Election Commission, which makes it virtually impossible for an average, ordinary person to run for office. On my website, votefulenny.com, uh, it should be a page in there, plan. Yep. Read, read, what I'm, read what I'm proposing. Get rid of the Federal election, election Commission and have somebody put up a bill taking away any and all taxpayer money from these non-governmental organizations, these, these advocacy groups like the Sierra Club, Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, Violence Policy Institute. I always say Sarah Brady at this point, but I don't say nothing bad about the debt. I happen to like the debt. I wish they would stay on tour. I mean, Grateful Dead. <laughs> the Grateful Dead. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, we've got to get people to see it's both parties to keep growing the government. Like I said, you've got two good congressmen, Massey and Amash. The rest of them need to be removed. Yeah. And that, that, that's true. And it, it probably, like you said, is going to take people, more people putting themselves in position so people have the option to select them and then also getting the word out. Um, what about, did you know, I just found this out not too long ago, that there were more asset forfeitures than actual burglaries or robberies in the entire United States. I think it was like uh, last year. More asset forfeitures from the government than actual robberies or burglaries reported. What do you think about that? It sounds like a robbery and a, it sounds like a, robbery and a burglary to me. Under the yeah. Seventh Amendment, you have due process, and that search and seizure needs to stop. Uh, sorry. They have, they have no right to the property. But it's going to take some people with, as the Sicilians say, belly, to do something. See, a lot of these politicians are in, are in bed with the local, uh, local cops, and they, th they think it's a good idea. I think it's a terrible idea. You know, if somebody's proven guilty, that's one thing. But they're not even, prove, they're not even making an attempt anymore. That's, yeah, that's I mean theft. People can be driving on the highway, you know, uh, carrying like church donations to the bank or something, and because it's a lot of cash, um, it looks suspicious. You know, it could be just taken from them, and they might, you know, some people might not. Some people try to get it back, but they they might not. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that's crazy. Um, well, what about? Uh, let me ask you uh, another kind of question that's a little bit different. Um, who's some of your favorite past or present people, Lenny? Uh, could be elected or not. Are we talking people that have run for office? Are we talking about writers, thinkers? Anyone, yeah. And I know there's probably a lot, so just asking you if you don't mind naming it, just a few. Ron, Ron Paul would be very, very close to the top of the list. But Ron Paul did not influence me to do what I'm doing or come anywhere close to influencing me. Uh, Ron's a good guy. Uh, he needs to be less of an intellectual. I would, ha I would have to say, even though this gentleman's never run for office, 
my intellectual godfather, or as I say on my website, if you go to the links page and you scroll down, the smartest man I know is a guy by the name of Charlie Smith. Uh, he's never written any books. He's uh, helped a lot of people write articles. He's done a lot of speaking over the years. But Charlie is the one that came up with that idea of scrap, scrap. If it increased the size, the cost, the reach, power of government, scrap it. And uh, he, he, he would be up there in the top one or two. As far as people elected to office, Ron Paul, Larry McDonald, believe it or not, and, and you're a little young for this, George Wallace was a good guy. He actually was. Uh, despite what a lot of people in the history books say. Well, it's very interesting to get, you know, to hear some new names, too, because, yes, when you go to your um, links uh, link on your um, webpage, which is Edner, L-A-D, and here, the number four, congress.com, at the very bottom there, yeah, Char Charlie Smith is the smartest man I know, and it has a link to more information about him. Um, and on there, you also have some of, uh, you know, some articles that you've written in the past. Um, one of them was called, Is Your Congressman a Zombie? Uh, <laughs> can you explain right. that just a little bit? I, well, ba basically, and, and I'm not doing nearly as much video anymore, but all of, the, all of these congressmen are programmed. Robotic representatives, is your congressman a zombie? You know, why do all of the Republicans... Vote, vote for Republican bills and the Democrats vote against them and the Democrats vote for Democratic bills. All of these bills increase the size, the cost, the reach, the power of government. They're worthless. They all work in lockstep. They're zombies. They're mind control slaves, all of them. Yeah, and and then they'll, they'll, they'll have yeah. the nerve. Yeah, yeah, I think it's called Congressional Robots, the, the video. It, it's, it's a little essay based on the video. I think the video I shot Christmas Day 2009. It, it's all pointing. It, 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 it's all, you know, it's like I said on the website, since 2008, nothing has changed. Trade deficit got larger. The deficit got, the debt got larger. We got more zeros in the government. I mean, employees, that's what they're doing. They're building a dictatorship. Yeah, we're definitely and on I, the trajectory. Uh, it's not good. But, we, Lenny, I have two more questions for you. Um, and let me ask you this one fundamental question. Is it whether you win or lose or how the game is played that matters most? Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe in the term uh, any means to an end. I, I, don't, I don't believe in that. I think you have an obligation to play the game correctly. Uh, my, my opponent will not play the game correctly. But one thing I would love to do is to really force her hand and force her to bring people into the to the district to speak to, speak for her, and then you'll know if there are any good Republicans. <laughs> the good Republicans won't show up. Every, everybody in the district hates her, but you know she gets a hundred thousand votes of maybe a hundred and twenty, hundred thirty thousand. <laughs> She's not yeah, one of my favorite gonna... people. How are you going to stay in touch? Here's a kind of a side question off that one. How are you going to stay in touch with Congress, make sure that you don't get caught in the bubble? I guess, you know, you don't sound like you would, but I guess everyone is somewhat vulnerable to that, honestly. And uh, how, how would you stay, you know, um, not in that Washington bubble if you were elected? Well, what they usually do to you, and Charlie was very close to a guy named John Russolo. He was a pretty good congressman out of Southern California in, in the 60s, 70s, maybe mid-80s. Uh, he, he actually was worth returning to office. And Ruslo basically told him everybody's being blackmailed here. You know? And it, it, the, the trick is what they, what they do to a rookie congressman is, you know, you can, you can either be a conservative or, or a liberal. Uh, I, I'm neither... <laughs> I'm me, but what what they'll do is you know you get a rookie congressman who's a conservative, and 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 then the uh, the establishment will will find somebody that he idolizes. So like, uh, you know they would get they, they they would get a guy with a 
conservative track record to knock on this guy's door and, uh, you know, if you need something, I can help you out. I'll show you the ropes, blah, blah. And then a couple of weeks later, the rookie congressman who's been hanging around with the established congressman uh, needs a favor, and the establishment congressman gets the favor for him, and then uh, a couple of weeks later, the established congressman runs into the rookie congressman's office and said, I need a favor. Can you go go speak to this group in Arlington, Virginia tonight, because I can't make it. And when you go, they give you a cash bribe. I, I I don't know how much time we have. All right. So we got just a few oh. more minutes left here. Yeah, yeah. So, but it sounds uh, like what ba- you're explaining ba- there, like one lie builds on another lie, kind of sort of thing. Yeah. Let's 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 do it this way. When Ron got reelected, I, I think it was '94. It was either '92 or '94. When he when he went back at the Congress. Uh, they they gave him a room <laughs> near a broom closet, and believe me, they weren't going to send any <laughs> established conservatives to talk to him because he wasn't going to listen. Ron's not going to play ball with them, which is why Ron votes the way he votes. He reads the yeah. bills. <laughs> Ron Paul, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Well, so Lenny, I we appreciate your time, and we appreciate your discussion here, and uh, it's, you know, um, refreshing to he- hear your answers. Um, I have one more question, and I'm going to combine it in two questions. On one of your articles, uh, you wrote about the Patriot Act, and um, and adding on to that, uh, what what does it mean to you if you were to take the oath um, for the U.S. Congress uh, to you know defend the Constitution and um, so what would it mean to you, how, how would you perceive uh, taking the oath, and, and what do you say about the Patriot Act, sir? Well, if you, take, if you take an oath of office, if you take an oath of office on a holy book, you better, you better believe that there's a higher power above you, and <laughs> you, you, you're you going to make mistakes, but there's one thing, you, know, you can make a mistake, but it's not about being a liar. The Patriot Act, and I love, I love this, the Patriot Act was sold to us to protect you and me. The reality is the Patriot Act is there to protect them from you and me. The Patriot Act needs to be totally defunded, and I will say this right now, and possibly all of your directors of Homeland Security, especially this current clown, need to be tried and, and indicted for treason. You hear that, Jay Johnson? You hear that, Chertoff, Mr. Dual Citizenship? You hear that, Governor, uh, what was the governor from Pennsylvania? Bush said he's a patriot, a liar. The whole thing, Tom Ridge, he, he was the best of them, by the way. Yeah. Okay? And, and that's, that's, that's a lot coming from me. The whole thing needs to be taken apart. Clinton tried to get it passed twice. When they, when they put the uh, small bomb in the World Trade Center, by the way, neighbors of mine built those buildings. I don't want to look at the real casualty list because I may find somebody that I went to school with, grew up with. Okay? 9-11 was created. Did not happen by accident. I'm sorry. And when I see Giuliani, who absolutely makes me want to puke, okay, where was he during 9-11? He was in Building 7. A great conservative, great. He's a rhino. He's a neocon. Garbage. It's the worst thing since Tom Dewey. Now, Patriot Act needs to go. It gives way, way, way too much, too much power to the executive branch, and the executive branch needs to be stripped of power, if anything. All right, very well, Lenny. And let me just say, um, because that just made me think of something. It seems like you know the government can audit us; we can't audit them. Um, everything's like kind of in reverse. Uh, we're serving the government instead of vice versa. I mean, before 9-11, there were FBI agents saying, you need to watch this person, you need to watch that person, but uh, some of the lower people in the field, but, um, you know, that didn't go up the chain of command, at least not in time or in a way that was um, good. And, uh, you know, we're punishing whistleblowers like, you know, Edward Snowden and, and people like that. I mean, I think Jill Stein the other day, the Green Party candidate, 
said she would hire him in her administration. So everything seems like reversed, and it sounds like what you're trying to do is to re-reverse it back to um, to normal. And uh, so any um, final words of wisdom here, Lenny? And we do very much appreciate your time, and uh, we appreciate you being on the um, ballot so we could do this interview. Yeah. The country is divided. It's divided by racial lines. It's divided by ethnic groups. It's divided by religious groups. It's divided by people who think they're conservatives, people who think they're liberals. Everybody out there is brainwashed. The way to stop the brainwashing is to ask a question. I don't care if you're a liberal. I don't care if you're a conservative. I don't care if you're black, white, whatever. You're an American. And your rights are supposed to be protected. Your rights are supposed to be inalienable. And they're supposed to be protected by the United States Bill of Rights, Bill of Rights, United States Constitution Bill of Rights. Remember, I'm driving in traffic. Sorry. They're doing a lot of construction around Indianapolis. Ask a question about anything being proposed. Does that increase the size, the cost, the reach and power of government? You'll see where we're heading. We need to stop the growth in government and then we need to reverse it in the fashion that it was expanded. You do that through the budgetary process and by the way, the other thing, we need to be out of the United Nations. That is not that is not negotiable. And I would, I, I, I would introduce or sponsor or co-sponsor Bronze Bill, American Sovereignty Restoration Act, in addition to other ways of cutting their money off. Uh, the government has been going bad in reality since 1865. Ap- Apatomox destroyed states' rights. Appomattox destroyed states' rights. All right. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt get us, getting us involved in foreign nonsense. Woodrow Wilson, who should have been immediately impeached. Y- you know, and then you go up to Roosevelt and the rest of it. It, it did not start yesterday. Uh, like that Billy Joel song, people, we didn't start the fire, it was always burning. Yeah. Uh, but what, what they've done in this country, you, you see, what, what they did in Germany before Hitler took over was they totally destroyed the economy, and they waited for an opportunist who was an extremely... Uh, <sighs> I'm trying to think of the word right now. It's kind of, it's kind of hard, but an, an, an extremely uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, opportunist is a good word. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think well, he's an, mean, an opportunist makes money, but yeah. Uh, yeah. An, an, an extremely uh, oh boy, the brain brain is not functioning. They got Hitler in. The first thing Hitler did was they, they had a crisis, the Reichstag, and then he and then he basically said, "I want." I want to be able to do anything I want to do. So they got something passed called the Enabling Act. And then Hitler would say, tell me your problems. And the solutions are always more and more and more government until he had total government or until what was behind Hitler had total government. Uh, that's what they're doing here, but it's taken them since 1933 to do it, to really do it, 80-plus years. And the same people behind Hitler were behind Franklin Roosevelt. You you look at the programs, and they are scary. Uh, a uh, a powerful leader. A uh, trying to think, trying to think the exact word I want. Uh, an outspoken a dem- leader. A, de- a demagogue. Uh, uh, and yes, yes, and no. By the way, you mentioned Buckley. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Buckley was never what he what he what he said he was. Buckley was big time internationalist, big time, big time, big time CIA. Wow. Uh, uh, I uh, I have some issues with the late Gore Vidal, but when Buckley basically said I need to punch you in the mouth on TV, that was not right. I like Fidel's books. I may not like his lifestyle. I may not like some other things about him, but I do like. Well, I like him. 1976. He's Mark? made a lot yeah. of great points, Corvidal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. worth listening to. Very rational person. A lot of good points yeah. that'll make you think. Um, 
Uh, so it sounds like um, the o- overarching thing, uh, besides you, you know putting a stop to you, you know the put an emergency break per se on what's going on, is uh, building consensus. And so it looks like you're trying to build consensus and uh, you know trying to unite instead of divide. Instead of divide and conquer, you know united we stand basically. The, the average people, regardless of what side they are on in any debate, need to see that this, that this debate is being set up to divide them. Now, I'm sure tomorrow night I'm going to be asked a few questions on immigration. Let's go back to Ellis Island. No special, no special deals for anybody. And... You know, you, you take a course like my grandmother, let her rest in peace, and you go in front of a federal official and swear an oath, and you're, you're an American citizen. I don't see anything wrong with that. And by the way, that, that kills the, these lawyers real quick. It kills them. Yeah, and there's a lot less, um, you know, government spending and stuff back then as well. Um, well, Lenny, it has been a pleasure, and we do thank you for your time today. Um, so that is the interview, but uh, people can find out more for about Lenny's campaign for the U.S. Congress, um, and uh, that's going to be at LadnerForCongress.com. And, of course, Lenny is uh, running as a representative for Tennessee for this year, 2016, District 7. And, uh, Lenny, it was a pleasure. Um, please drive safe, and uh, good luck in your campaign this November 8th. Thank we you very much, time, and please... Sir. Please, please send me a link to this, okay? Oh, we definitely will. We definitely will. And it will also be up at libertarianprogressive.com in 24 hours if anyone else wants to re-listen to this. And we'll send you a link for sure. Thank you again, Lenny. Appreciate and it. I'll get it out. Thank you much. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Bye. Sir.